So I head over now to uh, Venita, who is going to uh, talk about an interesting case study in, uh, in one of our questions. We had a, heard a lot of questions from, from all of you saying, you know, what's our incentive to get on to BNIT? And one thought that came to mind is, um, is something that our CIO, Randy Mott, said at one of our internal meetings. So HP, over the last three to four years, have been, you know, embarked on a lot of green IT projects. And uh, in one year, we were able to save enough power to light up the entire city of Palo Alto in one month, for, one, for an entire month. So you can imagine the impact that one company has in the power saving um, efforts that we went, went about doing. And so if you think about collectively what we could do, I think that's, that's a huge impact that we could have on the environment as well as on, I think, our wallets. I mean, we can make it you know, a lot easier on our wallets. Um, so I digress, but I want to go back to the topic that um, Joshua is talking about, which is the cloud, right? And we um, So when I was thinking about a case study apt for small and medium businesses, or is it more apt for large enterprises, and are large enterprises really adopting the cloud, right? And I would definitely say that, um, you know, for business critical applications, IT organizations in large enterprises aren't probably ready to move to the cloud yet. But for a lot of supporting applications that help with improving your processes, we've definitely started to see adoption. And that's what we're seeing within HP as well. So um, I wanted to talk about ourselves, really how are we embracing the cloud, how are we servicing our customers, how are we a, a, a cloud provider as well as the cloud consumer. So um, HP software a couple of years ago, you know, we only had one model, which was we were selling perpetual licenses to in-house customers. And like every company, we started to look at our business models and we said, okay, how do we service our customers better? What are our customers asking from us? And the utility model came up. I mean, customers did feel that they don't really want to buy perpetual licenses. They want to buy it on a term basis. They want to match the cost with the expense, with the revenues they're getting in. And so we decided to innovate. And you know, it was helped with the acquisition that we made of Mercury Interactive. And we decided to invest more in developing our HP Software as a Service unit. Um, we now are the largest IT management SaaS vendor in the world, amongst the top 10 SaaS vendors in the world. So clearly, you know, we've done very, very good things for this business unit. Um, uh, we have over 700 customers worldwide and you know, all the various verticals, there isn't a specific vertical that we're seeing more adoption. We're seeing you know, even more security conscious uh, verticals like you know, finance, government, uh, leveraging our services. Um, the, you know, the customers that we sign up typically continue to be on our service year over year. We see a 95% renewal rate, a testimonial to, this, to the, the value that we provide to our customers. So why are customers adopting the cloud? And Josh has talked about the waves coming, but why are they adopting the cloud? I mean, it's simple. It's because it's easier, cheaper, faster. Okay? It's these three things that really uh, have customers wanting to move to the cloud. And that's what we're seeing with our customers as well. We see our customers save 30 to 40% over a three-year period when we do total cost of ownership comparison. So when we started to um, think about the cloud, certainly there was a lot of questions in our minds. I mean, probably the same questions that arise in your minds, right? How do I deal with the security aspects? How do I deal with control? Am I going to lose control? What about performance, reliability, governance? I mean, just so many things to think about. And, um, and uh, you know, it certainly felt like a leap of faith, right? Moving to this model that we're just not familiar with, or going out of our comfort zone. So here's our journey, and it certainly is, you know, we're, we're you know, still evolving, and I'm sure there's a lot more to come in the future. But when we started out, um, we were leveraging just the third party data centers and other services that were required. Um, at that time, there wasn't, our solution wasn't built for multi tenancy, so we built out that capability. We built out a SaaS platform because 
HP software has a very broad portfolio. You might have heard Kamal yesterday. He talked about project and portfolio management. He talked about you know, our testing solutions, performance, quality, security. We have operation solutions. So there's a very broad portfolio that we have. And we wanted to offer all of the software as a service. So we felt that we really need to build out a platform so we can drop software on it and deliver it as a service. Um, definitely you know, started to adopt virtualization because that helped us with, with cost savings. Um, we started to leverage other SaaS vendors, okay, so for various solutions that we needed to run our business effectively, um, we went to other vendors like, you know, security audits, integration facilities, you know, HP ourselves, we're using a SaaS vendor for expense, uh, our expense system, for our HR recruiting system, you know, these are all SaaS solutions that we're leveraging right now. And, um, and then we, you know, because we have a monitoring solution, we have our testing solution, we drank our own below, below, right? We were using our own solutions to ensure that our customers got the best performance accessing these solutions across the globe. I mean, we have customers all over, uh, you know, all over the world leveraging our solutions. We want to make sure that they, they get really good performance and availability of our solutions. Um, and then the, and the other thing that we are doing right now is transitioning to the new generation data centers that HP has. Now these generation these data centers are built with you know power saving capabilities. You know they're all automated. Um, it's really gives you the leading technologies and the ability to really you know reduce your operational costs quite significantly. And uh, that's basically the process that we're in right now. So like I mentioned, this is not the end of the journey. I'm sure this is going to evolve more and more. But um, we've been extremely successful doing this. And I can probably say that we're probably amongst the few profitable software as a service vendors out there. We have significant profits. Um, and, and it's not something any other software, software as a service company can boast right now. Uh, one more. Yeah, so, um, you know, and, and one thing that Joshua touched upon is that, you know, regardless of the, 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 the cloud services you're consuming, right, regardless of whether you're going to choose infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, um, the, there is a shared responsibility between the provider and the consumer. Now, we are a provider of SaaS, so we adhere to service levels, we commit to service levels to our customers, we ensure that you know, they are satisfied with the service we provide, but also as a consumer of, of SaaS, we don't just sit back and, and assume that our providers are going to give us the service we're looking for. We do a lot of due diligence on our end, we validate, we monitor, we diagnose with the providers that we work with, Right, and ensure that they are giving us the service that our business is expecting. So this is really, you know, a shared responsibility between the provider and the consumer, and that is going to result in shared success. So that's that is primarily my, you know, my presentation. In conclusion, like I, like Joshua said, the, you know, the the SaaS wave is coming. Regardless of whether you're going to adopt it slowly or rapidly, it's going to come your way. And uh, I think it's time to just uh, stand up and embrace it. Thanks, everyone. Back to you. Yeah. Uh, yes, cloud is coming. Uh, adoption, discussion, evaluation is uh, up to you. But I'd like to, as uh, anyway, go to uh, request uh, Ramanujam to uh, uh, discuss a few things on cloud, please.